going in when I was at Century 21 was Latip. I joined Latip and I thought, okay, let's let's test this out. And it was pretty good. I started getting, I got to know a probate attorney, right? I got to know a, a um, I got to know an insurance guy who I still talk to. I got to know a financial advisor. And so I, I got to know quite a few people, but I sold the attorney at home. And then he referred me four probates in the span of two years. Then I, the insurance guy referred me to leads that I closed. He never bought with me. I still know him though. And I got some business out of this. And this was like, what? I was like off of a little group. And so these networking groups are pretty powerful. Uh, BNI, Latip, then there's the women's, I mean, you've heard of the women's council, right, Kevin? Yep. There's yep. that. You can go, there's other women groups. Just look up women in business networking. Chamber of Commerce. Mm. I think that's always, that has some uh, misconceptions as to what it is. But I can tell you, all the people that are involved in the city, in that town, or wherever you want to be involved in, that's where everybody goes. Not every week, or not every month, whenever they meet up. But throughout the year, if you're consistent, you're going to meet everybody that's important for that town. So I highly suggest you take a look at the Chamber of Commerce. And then Rotary Clubs. You've heard of Rotary, right, Kevin? Yep. Rotary Clubs. And then just Google Masterminds in my group or Meetups in my group. But those are the ones that I came up with after doing a little bit of research and obviously from being in one of them. Um, Kevin, what do you think? Yeah, and I think the key on this, two, two things. One is the most important element is uh, try to connect with the people that <laughs> run it and, and see how you can offer, provide some sort of uh, assistance in, in some way to help them with their group or whatever the case may be. And then the other thing is like the word networking to me, like networking events, I don't know, I kind of look at, I, I look at it in a way as almost like kind of, don't take it the wrong way, but it's almost like disingenuous in some way. Like I'm only going there because I want to take, like I want to take information. I want to, you know, uh, network and uh, because I want more deals and all that. I look at it more like it's, I want to go and make friends with people. I want to connect. I want to make friends with them. To me, like it's, it's easier for me to like swallow that pill of like networking. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. That's so, true. I didn't think about like, that. You're going to go and you're going to make friends with, and make relationships and be friends with people. And because of those friendships, you're able to, you know, do more business. So well, people obviously, if you come in and you're like, well, I'm here to just to do business, people aren't going to connect with you. Right. They're not going to refer you business. You know, Gail, Gail Zintek. Yeah. Out of Michigan. Awesome. Mm -hmm. she, she has this like, uh, she runs a pretty big group too, but based on send out cards. And she's part of two of these groups. I think two of these groups. I'm not sure the names. Let's just call it BNI, the BNI group. And what she does, she does something a little bit differently. She adds value by connecting with people by sending them cards every month, uh, just bringing that side of that that authenticity. And if you know Gail, if you don't know Gail or you do know Gail, you know that she sends you cards for everything: yeah. birthdays, anniversaries. Everything and on top of that, they come with goodies usually like brownies. So, I mean, I mean, if you join one of these groups and you connect with people and you start sending them thank you cards or happy anniversary or birthday cards, people will endear to you and they'll they'll be like, who who is this Kevin guy? He's so sweet. And we're gonna get into the mailing part. So let's let's go to the next one and let's see what it is. Client appreciation. Be memorable. Dude. Dude, did things. you just read my mind? <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> the podcast. Holy yeah. shit. That's crazy. So let's talk about client appreciation. What do you have to say about it, Tristan? Dude, client appreciation is something that we've never used correctly. And it wasn't until these random acts of coaching that we've been on that you and I finally realized the power of client appreciation only because it kept on hitting us in the fucking face every day <laughs> that and we need to be doing it. And we're it's not like, doing why am I not doing this? Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so I'm going to take you guys through what, what we learned from Michael Mayer, the guy who wrote uh, the seven levels of communication and pretty much tell you exactly what he tells us to do step by step. And this is basically how to run your business off of referrals. Now, 
Kevin and I mostly run it off of uh, online leads, right? That's yep. what we do. And, and referrals as well. But what this is about, the client appreciation thing changes your business. What we're planning on doing is adding a whole new sector to this. And to us, it, we're hoping that it's going to bring up to 50% of all of our transactions. Why? Because NAR says that that's how much business it brings for most people. Referrals bring up to 50% of all, all business for real estate. That's pretty huge, man. Yeah. And so what are some things that you do in terms of client appreciation? How so here's, here's the ideal situation. The ideal situation would be for you to have or host four events a year. Each Four. event needs to be spaced out 12 weeks apart. And the reason for that is so that you have enough time to be able to prepare, mail, call, contact, have the event, and then follow up with the people. So a few weeks before you, you, you decide to do this, you, you've got to have a database. You're like, okay, who am I going to invite to everybody? It's pretty easy. It's going to be your past clients your sphere, those are people that you talk to often that like you, and then your current clients, your current clients that you're showing, current clients that you're talking to often. Uh, those are the three categories that I would probably invite. Kevin, anybody, anybody I missed? Um, no, and, and really it's, uh, when I'm thinking about client appreciation, you think about events, <clears throat> you're thinking about where am I gonna hold it and how much is it gonna cost, right? Yeah. And what Michael talked about was, getting people that are in your within your influence like your people that you do business with on a regular basis like you know your partners your business partners your well like, here's here's what he said he said he said get your data get get who you're going to invite right find the place that you're going to do best example is this we're hosting it we're hosting a halloween party a halloween event halloween client appreciation whatever you want to call it we're doing it at the park it's a pretty big park and it has like a covering it has a play area for kids it has a duck pond and we're going to bring in taco trucks we're going to bring in a photographer we're going to bring in people in costumes that are already there for the kids and we're going to have a registration table we're going to have all of that the idea is to have it all ready so that when we approach our vendors like kevin is saying we're going to be selling it to them saying hey guys this is who we're going to have this is who we're inviting we need your cooperation here because we need door prizes, right? We need, we need help financially so that we don't have to pay for everything. And we need you guys there to be able to take advantage of our relationships. Right. And the other thing that he mentioned was, <clears throat> Michael Mayer mentioned, is when people, when people are, you're asking them for, for help, you also want to tap into their database, right? Because especially if someone is bringing in, <clears throat> they're, they're providing, uh, they're pr giving you a financial contribution, like your vend like one of your you know, vendor partners, what, they would obviously want their clients to be there too, right? I mean, yeah, they, man. they want to be exposed not, not only to your database, but they want to provide client appreciation to their people too. So allow them to invite whoever they want to invite. Let them know it's okay. Like, Bring in, we want you to invite people. I would say, you know what, tell them, hey, all the vendors, bring up to 25 people. Yeah. 25 people, friends, family, whoever you want to bring, bring them. And, mm -hmm. and some people ask, well, who, do I, who would I ask to partner with? Well, dude, we have lenders. We have escrow. We have a credit repair company. We have our home inspector, home warranty. You could go down the list of who, I don't know who you guys use, but just ask. Yeah, the list goes on. Landscapers, contractors. I mean, think about on every transaction, how much commerce takes place around one single transaction. Very Even true. if it was like a chiropractor, right? People move, they want, they need, they need new services. If it's a dentist, a doctor. So these They're are- insurance, Home insurance guy, dude. I actually didn't think about that before. This goes on and on and on. There's right, actually that, one of the things that we're working on is- looking to hire someone to just find these types of partners so that we can host client appreciation events so that we can have maybe perhaps they, they can pay for have access to some office space or what have you. So why don't you make that same person, your event, your event coordinator. There you go, dude. It's a great yeah. idea. Or yeah. event manager. But people always ask, 
well, what, when do I do it? Well, you know, you're going to do it four times a year, but what should the theme be? Right. And I say, it's pretty easy, man. I'm going to go through the whole year really quick and okay. then we'll move on to the next one. But January, it's a new year. The whole month is new year. You're celebrating the new year. February, it's Valentine's. March is spring. April still spring, but you can do Easter. May, Memorial Day, that's a pretty big weekend, Memorial Day weekend. Mm -hmm. uh, June, the beginning of summer. July, 4th of July, easy, 4th of July party. That'd be a badass party. Uh, August, you've got still summer. You could do the end of summer, beginning of school. I've seen, I've seen people do both. Or you could do movies, movie night, still summer. September is end of summer or beginning of fall. You can do welcome in the fall. October's Halloween, like we're doing. November's Thanksgiving and December is kind of like the holiday month. So you can pick whatever holiday you want to do or end of the year appreciation party. But yeah. that, that pretty much gives you everything right there. So pick three, four of those. Actually, four is what is recommended. And just go. Yep. And one last thing on that. If you're door knocking, for those that go door knocking, it's a lot easier to talk about inviting someone to an event, right? Sometimes we have an issue. Like, you know, you go to, you go to someone's you door knock on someone's house and, and um, if you have something to tell them, like, hey, we're having an event for the community, for the neighbors, would love to invite you. Sometimes that's a nice, a nice icebreaker. So Dude, I think that's the biggest challenge. Like, well, how do I get referrals? Check this out. You have an event. Now when you're calling your past clients, your sphere, your current clients, everyone, you're not routinely asking them for business anymore. Well, do you know anybody that wants to buy or sell? Your, your uh, script's going to be, hey, Kevin, uh, thanks for, thanks for being my friend or dude, I've known you for a long time. And this year we're going to have our first client appreciation party or our third one, whatever. And I want to invite you. We're going to have it at the park. It's going to be a Halloween bash, bring your costumes, bring your kids. And it's all free, man. I just want to say thank you. And I hope to see you there. That's it. No. You're not asking for business, no, but, but it's indirectly. They know that you're a realtor. They know, well, they know you're a freaking real estate agent. Yeah. And so it's natural, right? They're going to naturally refer people to you. And you're going to talk about real estate. It just comes up naturally. It's all about authenticity like we talk about all the time. Now but check this out. If they don't show up, if Kevin's ass doesn't show up to my party, <laughs> that's even better for me. I'm going to get a phone call. I save money. And more importantly, when I call him, I'm like, hey, Kevin. He's going to be like, yeah. It's like, Kevin, I missed you at the party. It was amazing. Um, I just want to know, are, are you still okay if I continue to invite you to the next parties? And he's going to be like, yeah, of course. Why? Um, yeah. And then he's going to feel super guilty. <laughs> and he's going to be like, well, you, you know what, Tristan, I was, I was talking to a friend and they're maybe thinking of selling or buying. And I'm like, yeah, dude, dude, send him over, man. But I just wanted to make sure I could still invite you. And uh, I hope to see you on the next one. You know, what's funny real quick. And then we're going to go to the next slide is we had a, an event yesterday, a company uh, team event. And mm -hmm. some of you guys didn't show up. I'm going to be calling you guys. I'm going to be calling you guys. <laughs> All right, next one. Housewarming parties. It's not Dude. as costly as you might think. Go Housewarming ahead. parties. That is something I've actually done in the past. Um, because when I first started in the business, I had a lot of uh, Spanish-speaking clients because I went off of based on referrals. And my mom had a, a jewelry business back in the day, and she referred me all of her clientele, which was all Hispanic. So we were having like... Um, taco cerveza parties nice and those were those were pretty awesome but i didn't know it was actually a structured thing until i talked to michael mayer <laughs> yeah i was like oh crap so here are the eight steps that that we got it's like there's a bonus step too but here are the eight steps to having a housewarming party number one and this is the most important one it's when you're going to have a housewarming party you need to introduce that really early on into the mind of the client because you'll find that only one out of every two is actually okay with that. And if you, if you introduce it as part of what you offer and what you do, they'll be okay with it because most of the time the people you're helping are the first time home buyers and they'll be like, Oh, a housewarming party. Or they'll say, wow, I've never done that before. Nobody ever did that for me. Uh, that's cool. Right? So yep. you're going to intro that very early on in your present presentation or when you're showing them property. Number two, and this is the same thing as your events, but get sponsor partners beforehand so you can get most of it, if not all of it paid. 
even make the caterer a sponsor too, because the people you're going to have that are around at the housewarming party, they're going to be like, wow, who, who's catering this? And that, that caterer is probably going to get some business from it if it's done right. right. But don't go overboard. Stick to about five sponsors maximum. That would be the max. And you don't want to, you don't want to have like 20 sponsors in one little house. I'd probably even stick to about three. Three would be my max, man. Somebody to cover the food, somebody to cover the drinks, and, and somebody to like do the prizes. Because and on that, on that real quick, find people that are local, right? Find people that are in the neighborhood um, because obviously they're going to benefit. They're going to want to be uh, exposed to the audience that, and the people that will be at the housewarming party. So if there's a local whatever, coffee shop or whatever, that's, uh, that would be a good target. <clears throat> yeah, very true, man. Very true. And I think uh, what you want to do is just make sure that these vendors at the very beginning know that they have to give door prizes away too. Because, What's an example of a door prize? Um, dude, I, I think like $10 gift certificate, $20 gift certificate, like Amazon visa, or if they want, you want to give away these gift baskets. It's so much easier for vendors just to go and buy gift certificates though. And here, here's one thing too on that. Um, from doing parties and doing these kinds of things. It's a lot better to take five Let's say you have fifty dollars. It's better to do five ten dollar gifts than it is to do like one fifty dollar gift. Why? Because you have more winners. It's yeah. not about the gift, right? It's not about like I get to win. Like it's not about like the dollar amount. It's more about the excitement of, of the thrill of the of the win, right? Like the, the the prize. Like they get their name called out. So think about Very true. smaller gifts with more opportunities to win are better than one big gift. That's very true. Now here's uh, number three. Two weeks before closing, you know, the transaction that you're closing for your buyer, because it's going to be a housewarming party for their home, call up the clients, make sure everything's okay. This way, if for any reason there's some miscommunication or if you're just, you're the type of person like, like me who doesn't really communicate as much with the sellers after like week one of opening, because I let the TC handle everything or, or whatever. Call them up and make sure that everything's still okay. Because if there's a hiccup, you want to fix it before it closes. Because then if it closes and their relationship's a little rocky, they're not going to want a housewarming party, right? So just make sure everything's okay before it closes. That, that, was, that was a step that Michael, Hall, uh, Michael Mayer said. And number four, you want to make sure that after you've closed, after it's ready to go, mail, mail out invites go four weeks before the event. So these invites that you have in a little beautiful envelope with a, a really nice invite, they're gonna go out four weeks before that event. And then the email, that email with the Evite or the Eventbrite goes out week three, week two before the housewarming party. So mm -hmm. make sure that you keep those two things in mind to give people enough time to, to be able to, to attend this right? Mm -hmm. And that list that you're getting, if, if your clients have a list of 20 people they want to invite, 30 people, encourage them to do that because these are people you don't know that they're going to give you. Right. They're going to be like, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm hosting a housewarming party for, for your friends who just bought a home with me. I mean, that, that itself says, that already stands out to me, dude. If somebody called me, I'm like, I'd be like, crap, I didn't do a housewarming party for my clients, right? I'd feel like a dick a little bit. <laughs> I'd be like, damn. Anyway, um, think about that. That's important. That powerful list that the client's going to give you, they're opening up their friends to you right there to invite them. Yep. Right? Next step, make sure that when it's, it's the event time, have the owners get the people, you know, the owners of the house, those buyers that bought the house with you, have those owners be the ones that go around and have the people fill out the door prize sheet so we can get everybody's info. That way they go around and they're like, hey, I sign in so you can make sure we get you the door prize and everybody's signing in. We're getting their email, phone number, everything. Right? Yep. That's, I thought that was pretty brilliant. Smart. And the next step, ask, as act, not ask. Act as the tour guide and a server. 
people will enjoy that. Plus, it'll it'll uh, have you go and make the rounds. You'll be the one that's kind of as people are coming in, you'll be like, "Hey, Joe, I'm Tristan. I'm the real estate agent. You want me to give you a little tour of the home that that I help, you know, purchase or whatever you want to call it." That's and then smart. you give them a tour, like, "Hey, this is cool. This was remodeled over here. Check this out." And the Joneses really loved this part of the home, but you're acting like a tour guide. You're kind of doing your job there, mm -hmm. which is super cool. And then leave early, leave early and thank the people there. So let them know it's their party. You pick up the signs after those signs that have, they're pointing to the house, the housewarming party. Uh, but leave early. You're going to be like, Hey, Kevin, dude, thank you so much. I really appreciate you uh, having me here. This is awesome. And I'm just going to let you guys do your thing. I just wanted to make sure everything was all set up right. And please enjoy your home. Thanks for introducing me to everybody. I'm out. Hey, Tristan, you know what my problem is with that? What? I'm usually the last guy to leave. I'm like, <laughs> dude, I don't have a single problem with that because I'm always sneaking out of I know. You always leave without saying bye to anyone. You're just out of there. Disappear. It's like, where did Tristan go? He's, I don't know. He's, he's in bed or something. But like, yeah, that's a hard one for me. That's a hard one for me. Yeah, that would be. That's a good one. Yeah. And then lastly, follow up and thank the owner of the house, of the home and the people who came. Do a non-threatening call, super easy call. Say hey, thank you so much for coming to the party. We really appreciate it. And that's pretty much it. And you're going to call up the owner or text them and be like, I just wanted to thank you again. That was super awesome. Super sweet of you to, to allow me to be there. And I'm just really thankful to know you. Question for you, Tristan, on that. Do you think it matters if you do a call or do a text? What's what's better, worse, or does it really matter? Um, dude, with the owners, since it, with the buyers, since you already know them pretty well, right? I'd probably do a text. And I would probably I'd probably with the other people that came by, you could do a mass text and thank them, but I might it's not that many, dude. If it's like fifty, I'd probably call. Okay. Because I was thinking the same exact thing. You could just do a mass text. Yeah, good. But you can have a bonus. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Bonus. This is this is one that Kevin and I came up with. Uh, get a photographer, and that photographer also can run video on his camera, and then email those pics and video to the people that attended. Hmm. Yes. Right. That that's good. that's awesome. Then you post that up into your social media. Get permission. And be like, hey, I'm going to post this up. But dude, posting that up on my on my business page or my personal page, yeah, I just wrapped up another home, just did a housewarming party for these amazing people. That's pretty awesome. That's that is, and that's that's. Uh, I mean, there's so much you can do with that. There's so much content. I mean, if you have video, you have photos, you can create. You can create. You can post. You can even create ads. Like it's, it's really powerful. Yeah. Let's do the next one. Pop buys. Top buys, remain top of mind. Face-to-face -face engagement is crucial. So this is a good way to just stay top of mind. Pop buys when you pop by. You pop by somebody's house and pop by. Uh, I know I know Nick does this a lot. He's he's always got his uh, his pop buys and he's got he does stuff on Facebook and he he actually posts about his pop buys on Facebook. Um, yeah, dude. I think uh, pop buys. I don't know if they were invented or I thought of by Brian Buffini, but he certainly made it really popular, right? The Popeyes and the Popeyes work a little bit like, um, think of the events, think of those months that have different themes. You could also do the same thing with Popeyes, but it's the reverse. Instead of clients coming to your event, you're going to their home and stopping by and dropping off something for holidays. So this isn't for all of your clients. This would be more for your, your core past clients, your core sphere, where let's say for the holidays, you're stopping by and you're dropping by a, um, uh, one of those pie servers, you know, the ones you cut and then you pick up the, the, the pie or the cake. You know, it's a, Brian Buffini always says, any way you slice it, I'm grateful for your referrals, right? And it's mm -hmm. a pie server. And nice. it has a little, and it has a little bow and everything, and you can do the same thing with lots of stuff like marshmallow peeps. Uh, there's one where Brian says, and most of them are Brian's ideas, so that's why I have Brian stuff. But it's, he says, "Have your peeps call my peeps <laughs> on the card." I was like, "Oh, that's that's kind of cute, right?" Yeah. And then you have people make homemade stuff, so you can make like a homemade peppermint 
cocoa kit or homemade dog biscuit ingredients if if you know that people are are have pets specifically dogs right uh, but there's a lot of things that you can buy or you can create where you can stop by and the the whole purpose of this is to actually have a system because if you don't have a system of consistency like i'm going to do this four times a year or two times a year you're just not going to end up doing it but this one's pretty easy self explanatory uh, what do you think, Kevin? Yeah, and the thing again is, is is remaining top of mind, providing some, you know, you're you're it's like a nice gesture. You know, you're going out of your way. You've got something nice for them, and you're you're giving them a gift. And who doesn't like gifts, right? And and the idea too is this wouldn't be like a cold um, contact that you hardly know. This would be someone that you've known. This is someone that you know that's in your sphere. That um, that knows you. That's not going to slam the door in your face when you <laughs> when you come by, right? Yeah, dude. I mean, that's it. Because some of the some of the things that you're going to put on your card is pretty corny. Like I had one that it was a donut. Donuts. In, you have donuts in a box, and that's like six bucks. But the the thing you'd put on the top would be like, I do not know what I do without your referrals, and that's super corny, but it's kind of cute. Yeah, and they right? know, and it's obvious, and, so and like, it's your friends. So like if you give them a plant. Or like something that resembles a plant, you just put thanks for helping me grow. There you so go. little things, right, that are super corny but cute. And Brian Buffini has a ton of them. You can you can look those up. They're available. Yeah. And uh, yeah, definitely check them out. So number five. What's number five, buddy? Number five is mail. Birthday cards, anniversaries, thank yous. There's a ton of services out there that you can use for this. Send out cards is a good one. Tristan mentioned it earlier. Gail. Zentac, uh, someone you can look up who does great with send out cards. Um, it's easy. You can automate it. So one of the things that I had struggled with um, is remembering people's birthdays, remembering people like anniversaries. Um, and I, I still suck at that. I do too. And that's why I, we have systems that can, you can automate all of it. So like you can set it up and schedule it out so that those things are going to go out. You kind of set it and forget it. Um, this is really kind of, this is one of the easier things that you can do. Yeah, I agree. Simple, you know, you, you This is probably the easiest one actually. Yeah, and and it's and you can systemize it really, you know, without without a lot of effort. Um and there's some really good services out there. So, what are some good ones out there? Send out cards is one. Um I I like EvaBot. EvaBot's another good one that we've been using recently. Um I know Market Leader has some mailers. Who else does? Who else does? Some, I'm trying to think of who else. Um, there's a newer company. It's an app called Thanks. It's T H. I think they leave the A out. T H N K S, uh, where you can combine the cards with a gift. Uh, kind of yeah. like EvaBot or send out cards like that. And One of the things. Yeah. There's handy handy written. It's called. Is it handy written? I'm pretty sure that's handy written. Let me check right now. Yeah, I think that's the one that does the handwritten notes, right? Yeah, let me check. Yeah, that's that's a good one. Those are just notes. They're really beautiful, and they start at three dollars. And so then that's... there's uh, the other thing is like with the the thing recently that was launched by LCA um, with uh, the market the marketing platform. There's, oh. there's actually notes in that platform that you can use that you can send out through the through the software. That's uh, true. So you can check that out too. What's the site for that again? Uh, LCA marketing center.com. Yeah. So LCA marketing center.com. You can go there. There's uh there's notes that can be created and you can mail those out directly. The other thing is um, I was going to say is thank you cards. Thank you cards. I mean, when you meet with someone and you haven't seen them in a long time or like, you know, you have an event, send out a thank you card, send out, you know, just as many touches as you can in a nice way. That's, that's appropriate is it's just like it's a it's a good touch i remember reading a book um about sending out tokens of appreciation and, and any any opportunity you get you meet with someone for the first time and gail is a master I think, right so, yep. so so i'll do something on facebook i'll post like we did the ink 500 thing and we were we kind of made it a big deal or whatever we did some posts and then out of nowhere i get a send out card from gail like congratulations and that's just a nice thing to get to receive. And there's not a lot of people that do it. So you really allows yourself to stand out when you have those moments, it's an opportunity for you to stand out and you can send those out to, to people and, and really 
create um, a positive feeling about you. And that could resonate. I mean, it resonates really well. And then you can, it can turn into referrals. Right. And again, again, it's the, it's the indirect um, concept that we talked about earlier. So Gail is in Michigan. She's in a certain part of Michigan that I don't really know anyone that lives, that works out there, lives out there. It's Kalamazoo. Kalamazoo. No, no right? joke, dude. That's the name of the city. So if I have, a, if I have someone that, that says, Hey, I need an agent in Kalamazoo. Where do you think I'm going to send that to? That's a beautiful dog, by the way. Love dogs. It's a cute little dog. Um, so again, it's the top of mind. It's, it's, you know, when it, when it's time to send a referral in Kalamazoo, who's going to get that referral? It's going to be Gail. And why? Because I got, I got that piece of mail. Otherwise I, I wouldn't have even thought about her. Dude, well, here's what it comes down to. You, you want to make it as easy as possible because I know I suck so bad at this. So I try to simplify it for me too. There's only three times I want to send out anything, right? One birthday, Second, anniversary, and third, when I feel thankful for something that they've done or a situation where I'm thankful for for them. Um, those are the three. Birthday, anniversary, thankfulness. Awesome. And that's it. But, you know, it's easier said than done because I suck at it. <laughs> yeah. So check out those platforms. Um, check out those platforms and get out there and just you know implement right let's we've talked about a lot of things here there's a lot that can be done and just take two three things that you, that you learned from this call and you want to generate more referrals start applying them right away right and yep, that's it dude yeah so with that you guys thank you so much um that was a good call man that was thanks everyone all right thanks you guys have a great week take care